Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, it's time to fly with Fimi Mini 3SE. We are going to test the 4G modem, which basically upgrades your drone with almost unlimited range, as far as your SIM card provider has coverage in that area. We are also gonna test the so-called Intelligent Flight Battery Plus 3100 mAh power, which in theory should gives your drone around 30% more juice to fly with. Here is side-by-side -side comparison between the original Intelligent Flight Battery Pro 2200 mAh power, displayed in genuine Fimi orange color and that Intelligent Flight Battery Plus 3100 mAh Let's start our test with the Intelligent Flight Battery Plus 3100 mAh power. The battery fits well in our Fimi Mini 3 SE and it's also compatible with X8 Mini version 2 and Fimi Mini 3. This is how our drone looks like with our 4G module installed. And now we are ready for action. Let's check the settings first, to make sure everything is set correctly. Setting the altitude limit to the maximum allowed by the law, 120 meters. Regarding video quality, we are aiming for the best quality possible, which for this drone is 4K at 30fps. We are in a very noisy RF environment, so 5.8G is preferable. You can see that the battery is new, with only one cycle. Finally, we are ready to take off. This drone video is played at double speed. Beautiful. You are noticing that in the very beginning I'm losing signal from both my remote controller and 4G modem, so there must be a jammer or something nearby, which is messing with my drone signal. The drone just switched to 4G and now we are ready to continue. Let's hope my signal does not drop so often, because I'm flying at low altitude, 36 meters from the ground and this is one of the requirements from the 4G modem manual. Make sure to fly below 100 meters, because the mobile network antennas on buildings point downwards. It makes sense, they're designed for people, not drones. Having a 4G modem on your drone feels amazing. It gives you the courage to fly further than you normally would, without worrying about losing signal. Of course, you need a separate physical SIM card with a data plan, but it's worth it. It doesn't use that much data, one flight is around 200 megabytes, which is fair enough considering that a single casual 1080p YouTube video takes around 500 megabytes. Lovely, I really like how this drone flies. It's very stable and gives you that premium feeling for such a low cost, that's amazing. So, 5 minutes later we're at 75% battery, which in theory means we should get around 20 minutes of constant flight time in total. For a mini drone, that's fine, not great, not terrible, but I would expect more from an extended battery, which this one claims to be. I usually take this route by car, but I decided to try it with my drone for the sake of testing. I'm doing all this for you guys. 
Let's find out together if there's a difference between the two batteries, the genuine one, which is 2200 milliamps, and this extended one with 3100 milliamps power under its shell. We're almost back at our starting point, so our Fimi Mini 3 SE is beginning its second lap. Go Fimi, go go go! Oops, we lost the signal once again at the same place, this is a dead zone and I should avoid it for my next videos. Maybe I'll test it later with my other Fimi drone, the Fimi X8 Tele Max. I've already made a review of it, and if you haven't seen it yet, I definitely recommend checking it out. In my opinion, the Fimi X8 Tele Max is the best consumer drone Fimi has made for 2025, and compared to its rivals, it's ridiculously cheap. Nice. Nine minutes later, we're at 52% battery. Let's see what time and battery percentage we'll have when we finish the second lap. There's a lot of construction work going on around my neighborhood, but hey, that's life, things are always changing. The look of my city is changing too. I think the 4G modem is doing a perfect job letting me control my drone freely. I can't imagine flying a drone without it. Brilliant! And we have officially finished our second lap with the Intelligent Flight Battery Plus at 30% battery left, so let's write down this score and land our drone, so we can swap batteries. Nice. Great job for me. Preparing our genuine battery for the test. This is my second genuine battery, and it's also new, with only one cycle. This makes it the most accurate test you can do, as both batteries should have worn out identically so far. Checking the settings once again. And we're good to go. The drone video is once again played at double speed, so you don't get bored. Thanks for not letting yourself get bored with my videos. LOL and also LMAO. And again we are losing signal at the same spot. But I know what to do already so let's continue our journey. While the drone is flying, let's take a moment to appreciate the view. 
It's amazing how much detail you can see from up here. Flying a drone really gives you a whole new perspective on the world. You notice things you never would from the ground. And of course, this is the perfect time to check your battery and make sure everything is running smoothly. Flying drones is as much about patience as it is about control. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride. How about you? Do you have a drone, and do you fly it often? It would be awesome if you shared your experience with everyone in the comments below. Personally, I try to fly at least once a week, because flying drones is my hobby, my way to escape reality, and dive into a surreal world. I started out with some cheap toy drones and now I own several good ones. Recently, I bought the DJI Avatar 2 and the DJI Neo, so expect more content about these two soon. Five minutes later, and we're at 75%, which is the same as the other battery that claims to be 3,100 milliamps. So either the drone's calculation isn't accurate here, or this battery is exactly the same in terms of flight time so far as the other one, which is mind-blowing. Starting the second lap with 69% battery remaining. You can see how everything drops, satellite, remote controller, and even the 4G signal. There's definitely some kind of jamming device there, and I'm not sure how legal that is. But as long as my drone is flying, I don't care. Let's keep going and see how our second and final lap turns out. I remember my very first experience with an RC helicopter, it was over 15 years ago when I bought my first remote-controlled helicopter. It could fly up to 50 to 60 meters, and that's when I realized I loved doing this. One of my childhood dreams was coming true, flying. There was no camera back then, but the feeling was incomparable. Look how much time has passed since then, and just see how drones have evolved today, so stable and accessible for everyone. Nine minutes in, and we're at 51% battery, which is just 1% less than the other battery. But let's do that math. 3100 milliamps beats 2200 milliamps by 1% so far, that's pretty funny, isn't it? Brilliant! We are almost at the end. I can't wait to see the final results. Oops, the crane is moving in my direction, let's raise the altitude a bit, because I don't want to crash my Fimi Mini 3 SE.
and we've officially finished our second lap with the Intelligent Flight Battery Pro at 35% battery remaining, which is not the result I was expecting. I'm sure many of you feel the same. So at the end, my advice is, if you want an extra battery, just buy another genuine one, the one marked as 2200 milliamp hours. If you can get the 3100 milliamp hours cheaper, you can go for it as well. But why bother yourself and your drone with the hassle? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, more videos like this are coming. See you in the next one.